I have used the Tudic Cover Diesel R Backpack 32 liter for over two years for both traveling and professional work. This is a rugged multi-purpose camera-centric backpack that would please many. Stick through this video to see my long-term experience of using it for over two years. This backpack speaks durable materials, as a camera backpack should, with a Cordura fabric and solid shoulder straps. The design of the backpack is quite cool in my opinion. It has all the functions I want from both a backpack and a camera backpack as well. The design is very similar to the Wonder Provoke 31 with some exceptions. The materials are different, and the Provoke 31 has a much more minimal look and feel to it. I barely use this backpack for professional use though, unless it's for a minimal video setup. It doesn't have the necessary functions for organization and ruggedness making me comfortable using it for all my video gigs. More on that later. I like the design of this backpack from a security standpoint and in general. The design doesn't scream camera backpack, and I think people don't associate Thule with a camera backpack manufacturer, and it doesn't resemble the Provoke 31 that much. This backpack is the most comfortable of all my backpacks of this size. The shoulder straps have load lifters bringing the backpack closer to the body. Here is a different example of why with a 2 lit Landmark 40 without low letters. I use the hip belt a lot less than I thought I would, but it's really nice to have those close times walking longer and with heavier loads, like I did in Bergen earlier this winter. The hip belt doesn't have that much cushioning, and for my usage, that's really not a problem. I feel I can comfortably wear up to 10 to 13 kilos on days with less walking. I just take up the hip belt in order to redistribute the weight for longer walks or whenever it gets uncomfortable. I have been getting questions about how much this section of the hip belt beneath digs into the back, and I would say it depends on how high on your back the backpack is located. I am 180cm tall, and I like to adjust it in a way so that the bulge kind of rests on the lumbar section of my back, and that way it doesn't dig into the back. Some other things I've noted with this backpack is that it can get quite tall when you fill it up, it doesn't expand that much outwards, it more or less becomes a tower. Another thing that is sometimes very annoying is that this backpack is not completely balanced, which totally depends on how you have distributed the weight inside of the backpack. There are three front pockets, one on the bottom, one at the top, and one semi-hidden for passports, tickets, or any other flat items beneath the covering strap of the roll top. The bottom pocket is okay. It isn't as flat as I thought, and it can hold a lot of stuff without digging into the inner part of the backpack. I store a power bank and a charging cable and secure my keys here whenever traveling. I have mixed feelings with the surrounding flaps though. They mostly point outwards over time and I don't think this is a particularly pretty setup. You can of course point it inwards, but over time they will eventually point outwards again. I use the big top pocket for quick access items such as my true wireless earbuds and my wallet. Whenever commuting in environments, I don't think it's prone to pickpocketing. This pocket doesn't have to be zipped in, I can be magnetically held in, which is quite nice. Just bear in mind that these magnets aren't very strong, so if your backpack is fully stuffed, you might want to opt for the zippers. I really like this semi-hidden pocket for safe storage that can contain planes, tickets, and a passport, or any other flat items that you really need to take care of while traveling. I use the side pockets for small items such as true wireless earbuds, snacks, or any other items I want more or less quick access to. The hooks for the straps adds a layer of security, but I do not trust these pockets to be safe in areas where pickpocketing might be a risk. The main compartment can either be the whole backpack or just a half of it. I rarely use the whole compartment without the camera bag, but for everyone who wants one backpack that can serve multiple purposes, they will appreciate this very freedom to customize their backpack to their needs or situations. And if you want to convert to a full-fledged camera backpack, there are several camera inserts you can buy from camera stores as well as cheaper options from AliExpress or eBay. I like that I can zip up the top pockets, meaning that if I'm getting either my laptop or tablet or both, the stuff from this pocket will not fall out. This flap can also be tucked in if you don't want to use this as well. I'm also switched between compact lenses on the Sony a7C, and therefore I have room for some lights, microphone, as well as fitting my laptop charger mouse into this compartment as well, which frees up a lot of space in the other half of the backpack. I like how the camera bag is integrated into the backpack as well, making up for an extra protective cushioning but also removing a lot of weight from the backpack if you take it out. I am overly happy with the durability of the backpack, but there are some things I would like to see Thule improve in their next version of this. I wish the backpack could be deeper for several reasons. First being just how much pressure on the equipment you eventually would bring if you bring a laptop, a tablet, and say a larger full frame camera with a top mounted viewfinder. Rangefinder cameras would be fine, but the extra height of the viewfinder of my Sony a7S III makes everything a little bit tight, and even though it looks like there's a lot of space here, bear in mind that the laptop and the tablet section digs into the camera compartment. 
I think the zippers are too small holding everything together in this backpack. Sometimes the backpack can get a little stuff and I now have to press the clamshell part down or lift the zippers up in order to put not too much pressure on the zippers. Even though there are YKK zippers, this isn't really an ideal solution. The side access pockets for camera gear or whatever you have in your camera bag gets folded when the backpack gets loaded up and can therefore be quite difficult both opening and closing it. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having quick access pockets for your camera gear, like you can on backpacks with similar design and stiffer zipper sections. I really hope Tudor will fix this in the future version. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this backpack. I have acknowledged that the Thule covered DSLR backpack 32 liter, which has a name that is a mouthful, is aimed more towards the traveling photographers, probably bringing smaller camera gear and not that big heavy camera package. I use it for commuting whenever bringing a camera for single photography or more minimal video gigs. I also bring this for weekend chips whenever I'm bringing camera gear. For traveling, I bring the Sony a7C with a few compact lenses, making the size issue with larger cameras a non-issue in my case. If you're a traveling photographer or a minimal filmmaker, this might be the one for you. Just bear in mind that there are a few things that could set you down when compare this to other camera backpacks. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of this, it really helps out my channel. Leave a comment below if there's anything you're wondering about regarding this backpack or any of the other products I review.